I'm at Icon's House Zero in Austin, Texas. This building was 3D printed by them in eight days and then finished out with manual construction labor, which took a considerable amount of time longer. Last time I was here, I took a walk through and sat down doing an interview with CEO Jason Ballard, which was an incredible eye-opening experience. This time they've allowed me to stay in what I believe is the most beautiful printed house in the world. And I think you'll agree with me, if you consider that it brings about a new paradigm paradigm shift versus four basic walls. Let's take a look inside. This entryway is awesome. You're greeted immediately with the printed concrete walls and subtly introduced to the rest of the building. The curvature of the wall creates these nice pockets of space that are just slightly isolated from the rest of the building and it gives it the feeling of unique spaces like this is a workstation that's more of a living room than a dining room area even though it's all just one big room. Icon's CEO, Jason, is a very thoughtful guy. I don't know if he chose all of these books himself, but his thoughtfulness as a leader is so contagious, I'm sure whoever selected these books did so with intention. So I'm going to pick one to read, but it won't be Cooking in Marfa because that's a particularly weak suit of mine. You always know you're in a really nice house when it's hard to find the fridge. Which one of these panels does it live in? If you guess this one, you're correct. Ranch water, don't mind if I do. I have a feeling the book for me might be in the office. Lake Flato is the architect behind this house. To my knowledge, it's the first 3D printed house they ever designed. This one seems like it might be useful to me someday. There's something to be said for starting things from a beginner's perspective. There's also tremendous value in experience. Some of the first YouTube videos I ever made are some of the best I've done to this day because I came to them without any preconceptions of what my videos should be. I think the same principle helped Lake Flato create something completely original. And now that they've dived into this, they can continue to push the limits. And a critical part of this project's success was Icon's extensive experience. Despite the magic quality of my first videos, now I have a much better camera, a better microphone. I guess what I'm getting at is don't be afraid to pursue a 3D printed construction project. In many ways, you may be better off as a beginner rather than somebody who has their mind set in their ways of traditional construction. They chose to use quite a few of these smooth concrete flower pots around the house. They have smaller ones scattered around everywhere. They're very interesting pieces because they're clearly not printed concrete. However, when you're printing concrete, there's a little bit of material extrusion while you dial in the mix and then clear the hose at the end. So if you can quickly get this concrete into molds, you can truly reduce the waste to virtually zero. The same principle applies to these larger flower pots outside. I wouldn't be surprised if Icon was already experimenting with some things like this. There are really very few limits to the shapes that concrete can take. As nice as this house looks during the day, I actually think it looks even better at night. Curved walls are a very rare feature and light interacts with curvatures in an interesting way that's very appealing and requires a second glance. Stop printing houses with four walls. Start experimenting with what you can do with a concrete printer. I'm really grateful that Icon would give a small independent YouTube channel like me the opportunity to stay overnight in a house like this. I'm sure there is a long list of people who would love to check out this incredible piece of the future. All right, I finished my ranch water. Now it's time to get serious. Construction automation is the future, and I'm willing to debate that with anyone until the cows come home. If you find somebody who's willing to argue against that thesis with me, I would love to have them on my podcast. Not only is construction automation the future, but it's the present as well. The thing people really want is affordability. When it comes to technology, affordability is something that comes with maturity. When an industry is young, especially in a field like construction so set in its ways, there's an adoption curve. With such a stubborn industry like construction, this adoption curve can be noticed well in advance. Let's do a thought experiment. 
you automate the mining equipment, the lime processing equipment, and the material delivery process to the printer. At this point, your human input cost could potentially be zero. If you automate materials procurement and automate the process that the materials are deposited, you can truly automate the entire construction process. If you look very closely, you can see a slight discoloration here. This may be because of a liquid or maybe they're concealing some micro fractures with another cementitious material. There's also the question of longevity. They can do all the lab testing in the world, but only 10 years can tell you what truly happens to a printed building after 10 years in the open weather, through the seasonal changes, and potential freezing events. In my opinion, it's much better for Icon to experiment with a home that they own instead of experimenting on potentially low income housing or a home that somebody else might depend on for their livelihood. I think this incense holder might be 3D printed. Every house built with robotics brings us one step closer to a future of automation where we have a surplus of housing around the world. That's not going to be accomplished just by people alone. We need technology, both hardware, software, and material solutions to propel construction to where the rest of the world is going. Building beautiful homes is a key step in bringing this technology to the world. Expensive projects will be loss leaders that bring efficiencies learned from the pockets of those who can afford it, benefiting those who previously could not. Well, I just got a great night's sleep. If I pull off a coffee cutscene, will you guys think I'm a real YouTuber? There's merit in pursuing perfection. I had to Google how to make a coffee out of a chemistry set. I hope it was worth it. Of all the things that automation improves, I agree with Icon that coffee is not one of them. There's something special about grinding your own coffee bean and pouring hot water over it, getting a fresh brewed cup of coffee. Blind automation isn't helpful. For a product to truly create a paradigm shift, it needs to be better in every way. Safety, looks, performance. In order to convert construction to a world where automation is the standard, it's going to have to be better in every way. I hadn't even noticed there was a sliding door here. This must be like the biggest sliding door I've ever seen. The shower's really cool too, check this out. So there's the shower, and then you switch the button, and it comes down from the bathtub over there. That's a pretty great shower. I wanted to take a closer look at something that I saw last time I was here. This art piece, is clearly printed concrete, but it doesn't look like the rest of the concrete from this building. Icon has done something to smooth out the edges, and this may be a hint as to a design choice they might make for future homes. They also have this piece, which is a pink or slightly reddish color, kind of like lunar regolith maybe. It also demonstrates that dyes can be easily integrated with this tech. Check out the intricate routing system. This was either done manually by hand or using some kind of LiDAR or laser system with a CNC router. These printed homes have really gained some steam. It's amazing to see how far they've come from the first homes I was sneaking around to film to being permitted to sleep in this amazing 3D printed house here in Austin, Texas. It's so clear to me, now more than ever, that this industry is only getting started. Automation is taking its hold in the construction industry, and that's not going to change. Okay, just one more cup of coffee and I'm out of here. The thing is, everybody wants a affordable 3D printed house. Me too, but technology doesn't work that way. You don't get something cost effective overnight. The way technology makes things cheap is with scale. And while you scale up, you need to start 
with the most expensive things first to cover the R&D expense. In this circumstance, Icon owns this house. They're not even selling it. So it's a 100% R&D expense. Again, huge thanks to Icon for letting me stay here. There are actually multiple Icon homes in Texas you can book on Airbnb right now and experience this for yourself. Can we just take a minute to appreciate that they put hardwood on the ceiling? The outdoor spaces in this home might be where you can appreciate the printed concrete the most. It's expansive and mysterious as opposed to inside where it's not the centerpiece, rather an accent. The freeform nature of these printed homes makes it difficult to translate the layout to a video format. That's why I have the virtual village of printed houses where you can digitally tour virtual models of the home right on my website. Check it out at the link in the description.